Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, we're working on a table inside today. And it's going to be a rarity, I don't think I'm going to do many more videos from inside the house. It's just kind of crappy outside today, and I just received my donor Big 16G from one of the gentlemen on the DSM Classified page on Facebook. So Josh, if you're watching, thanks a lot. I'm really going to enjoy using this 16. But today what we're going to do is clean this old dusty thing up. The shaft is in great shape. There's no play. Everything is in working order. It came with a couple oil and coolant lines. So we're going to take this thing apart. We're going to clean up all the exterior, the compressor side, and maybe a little bit of work on the hot side. I want to port out the wastegate flapper to avoid the boost creep while I'm waiting on these uh, other parts to come in. Uh, we'll just get this knocked out so we can bolt this thing on in the coming couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a long, interesting video today. So I'm not going to record the uh, cleaning process as much, but I will show you what I'm going to do for the port job. And I'll show you, obviously you can see it right now, crusty wastegate. It's a little dirty on the inside of the uh, compressor here. But uh, yeah, I'll clean this thing up, get it looking nice, and uh, we're going to go bit by bit today and hopefully get this thing looking pretty so we can bolt it right up to the car and make a little bit more boost. So let's jump right into it, guys. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the pin that's holding our wastegate actuator arm off, and that's just a little metal pin. You can pull it out with some needle nose pliers, which I have over here. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and take off our oil drain line, which is back here behind the wastegate, and we're going to take off these lines. Now, the oil line is two 10 millimeters that we're going to take off, and I believe they're only torqued to 11 foot-pounds, so they shouldn't be on there too hard. And on the other side here, we're going to take this banjo bolt off, which is a 19 millimeter. And we're also going to go ahead and pull off the two 12 millimeters that are on either side of the mounting plate for the wastegate. And we're going to get this thing down to just a turbo. We don't want any of the lines on it. We're going to clean it up a little bit. And like I said before, we're going to be doing a little port work afterwards. So I'm going to throw you guys off to the side and uh, start ripping all this stuff apart and get it into pieces. Alright guys, so we have our wastegate actuator and arm pulled off. Uh, this is definitely going to get a cleaning as well. Uh, we have our oil return line right here. We have our oil feed line, which is in great condition still. And we have our coolant line. And it looks like it's probably been bent and adjusted a couple of times to fit different vehicles, but we're going to try to fix this a little bit, clean it up. But our main focus today is Mr. Happy the turbocharger. We're going to come over here and open this up. And we're going to we're going to try to make this look pretty again. All right, so now that we've got all of the parts pulled off of this turbocharger, we're going to take our V-band clamp off right here, which it feels a little bit smaller than a 10 millimeter, but it seems to come off with a 10 millimeter. I want to say I've seen it say uh, nine and a half millimeter. Not 100% sure on that one, but once you get your V-band clamp off, you're gonna want to pull the rest of this V-band out and I'm gonna put the nut and bolt back in through it to hold it in place keep me from losing it. Uh, we're going to separate the hot side from the compressor housing. The center section should stay attached to the compressor housing. I want to pull this straight up. I might have to go out and grab my 
dead blow and give it a couple love taps real fast. Be right back. All right, now with a couple of very, very light love taps to both sides. Oh, look at that. Our compressor and center section has popped right off of the exhaust housing. Now, there's a little bit of an issue I just noticed with this turbo. No worries, I've already got a remedy solution for this. Inside, let me zoom in a little bit here. If you look inside, underneath this flapper, you're going to see some cracks. Get a little light to show you. We have a couple of pretty big cracks on the inside here. And I'm going to do some measuring with my uh, digital calipers in a second and see if this exhaust housing has in fact been ported prior to this. It looks like it may have been opened up just a little bit. Um, Nonetheless, I did order a replacement exhaust housing, which should be here in a couple of weeks, and I plan on putting this on the car before then, so I think we're going to clean this up a little bit, pray for the best, and seems as I'm only going to go for around 18 PSI for now, we're going we're gonna to ride with it until the new one shows up, and I have a brand new exhaust system coming too, so when I'm putting that on, we'll take this back apart and swap them out, I guess. So I got to thinking, and if I'm going to clean this thing off the right way, obviously I don't want to get this center section all covered with water or degreaser or any chemicals. I'm just going to try to spray it off with a little bit of brake parts cleaner. That way I can keep the inside from getting any other water or anything that's not supposed to be there. So if you get to this point and you want to take off your compressor housing, all you have to do is take out this big snap ring here. Snap rings are never a fun thing to take out should be able to pinch it. Snap ring pliers do work better than your standard needle nose pliers. Ugh. All right. Now that that's out, pay attention to the uh, orientation of this because it looks like there is a groove or a tapered edge on the top where it seats inside and the bottom seems to have a nice sharp edge on it. Uh, you can see right here on this shiny edge where it seats looks like a, it's cut at a little bit of an angle, like a downward angle so it locks into the front of the compressor housing. Alright, so that's enough. Now, if I'm lucky, I should be able to give this a couple tap and tap taps with a dead blow. little compressor housing and center section to come apart. Bear with me. This may take a little bit more love than I was prepared to give it. Oh, it looks like... Hey! hey! Yahtzee, we won. Alright, so that's what your compressor wheel looks like. And that's what your turbine looks like. It's a little crusty. But what can you get? What should you expect, rather, with used parts? Alright, so all this stuff is going to go into the sink. And it's going to get a nice scrub down and clean out. We're going to make it look brand new again. And then I'll show you how to put it all back together so that you can have your big 16 on your 2G DSM or 1G. This is kind of turned into a turbo tear apart video. All right, guys, we got everything nice and cleaned up, all degreased. Compressor housing is nice and shiny. I just hit it with my uh, Dremel for a minute and polished up the outside of the cover. It came out pretty well. I like that. So I'm going to set this one off to the side and. Even though it's got a little bit of a crack inside of here, kind of sucks, we're still going to go ahead and pour it out just a little bit, just so I can show you how to open this opening up a little here. Uh, what I did was just took some painter's tape and covered up the flapper, I don't want to grind that all to hell, and just kind of taped it to the open position, 
and then I got my Dremel with a 80 grit uh, sanding wheel on it and I'm just gonna go in and start removing a little bit of the material on well, if you look at it a U shape you're gonna make a U from the way the flapper opens this bottom of the U here, like a half circle, half moon, that's what I'm going to sand out and I'm going to try to open it up just a little bit. I'm sure if you are watching my porting video you've seen a better porting video where they explain that the flapper can get hung up if you raise the hole this direction. It'll hang itself up basically and keep your wastegate from closing all the way causing you to lose boost. So I'm going to throw a little high speed action into the mix and start cleaning this out. Okay guys, so here's our finished product. It's been cleaned, it's been degreased, disassembled. We poured it out the wastegate flapper and threw it back together. And I know I didn't do the best port job in the world, but should give you a good idea on how you're supposed to do this. Uh, everything's back together. I did save the oil lines, the drain line, the coolant line right here. I don't know if I'm going to use them. I have the hardware still. I have some more parts showing up in the next couple of days that will hopefully get this thing on the car. And within the next three to five days, I should have my new hot side. So I think I might hold off on throwing this on the car until then. And uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out. And I'm looking forward to getting this on the car and making some, some more power. All right, guys. That's it for today, so if you like this video, make sure you drop a like down below. Feel free to subscribe. Always nice to chat with my fellow DSMers. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for another video, feel free to drop them down below. Uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out with your next project. And until next time, guys, we will see you on today's project guide another day.